Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks very much for taking time out on a Friday afternoon to join our 17th Digital Dispatches. Um, I'm really pleased today to have um, some of our colleagues from the Recovery um, Project with us. We have Kevin Curran, we have Christine Devine and Ted Kelly with us today. Um, and they're going to talk to us about the Innovation Recovery Project that they've been working on. Um, they will be sharing a video with us and um, giving us some insights um, to what they learned through the, the programme of work. We would appreciate it if you would put your questions in the chat box just at the, as we go through and then we'll pick those up once the guys have finished doing their presentation. Um, and obviously this has been recorded and we'll share it widely afterwards. Um, so, Kevin, I'm going to hand over to you in the first instance before we run the, the video in a few minutes. Okay, thanks, Linda. Uh, and, uh, yeah, as I say, we're, uh, I think we're running an intro, intro video, but just to let you know, my, my name is Kevin Curran, and I'm the coordinator of the, the project here, the recovery uh, and colleagues uh, with me today is uh, Christine Devine, who's a peer educator from, from Anna, and Ted Kelly, peer educator from the Sligo Leitrim area, so we're on the border area. And uh, I suppose essentially, uh, it'll probably come up in the video, but essentially what we do is we design and deliver uh, mental health adult education programs to communities in, uh, living in the border counties. Um, we're just one uh, part of one hub. We're the South Hub that covers Sligo, Leitrim, Fermanagh, Cavan and Monaghan, but there are other hubs. The West Hub covers Donegal, Derry, Strabane, that area, and then the East Hub covers uh, places like Der uh, Belfast, go uh, down to, to uh, Newry County down and into the <clears throat> border around Louth. So we're part of that EU interreg funding. Um, this distributed funds through uh, co co you know, co uh, cooperation working together uh, and again through the trust and the HSE. Uh, and I suppose very simply, you know, people ask why why is why do they spend money in, in, in health uh, projects in the border areas? And it's very simple. The border areas tend to be traditionally areas of uh, health inequality. And what happens is t in our situation, funding and money and jobs tend to go to places like Belfast and, and uh, Dublin. And you're left with sometimes a residual population of the border uh, counties where there's um, you know, less employment, uh, less money spent, and the knock-on effect is, is certainly things like um, health inequality. So you've got higher levels of morbidity and mortality, and things like addictions and uh, bad bad habits in terms of food, you know, um, dietary and whatever, and smoking habits, um, and also mental health issues. So the EU and uh, the government, the governance people, that are trying to find ways of innovative ways of trying to uh, bridge those gaps. And we're only one part of one project, uh, uh, looking at mental health and trying to find new, innovative, and uh, original ideas and creative ways of, of trying to address those balances. Uh, imbalance in terms of uh, health and quality. Um, I want to talk to you again uh, very briefly before I pass you over to the peer educators uh, about just the overall picture. Uh, we've been very lucky because we're coming close to the end of the project and it has been well received. Uh, and that wasn't we, like a lot of these pilot projects, we're never too sure, but it certainly has been well received because the three hubs together have uh, nearly reached 8,000 people, unique beneficiaries, we call those. So these are these are people that just joined a course and they can only be measured once uh, from for our stats. So that's quite a large number of people, and each hub has contributed to about two uh, two and a half thousand people or roughly uh, per hub. So it has been well received. It's been quite successful. Uh, and when I was putting the ideas together for this, I was trying to uh, unpack what what are the core ingredients of the. Um, recovery, why it's been so successful and why people have, uh, have responded so well, uh, even during the pandemic when you know we weren't able to get into community. So I'm going to talk to you a wee bit about that. Uh, first, very quickly, I'll give you my background. I trained as a nurse uh, in London uh, many years ago. Uh, I'm not going to tell you when, but certainly uh, I worked in London uh, in community mental health nursing and then in Northern Ireland for a while. I went back to university to Korean and then end up doing uh, uh, an MSc in Trinity and working in the uh, research area called epidemiology. 
And in the 90s, nobody really knew about epidemiology. Now we, we know too much about it. But the two things that I picked up from my time then in, in terms of epidemiology was, was one is was the um, one is the importance of the most of the uh, population health really in the early days came from not from medical intervention or drugs or treatment. It came from engin engineering, uh, you know, better, you know, sewer systems, better uh, water, sanitized water and better buildings. So you didn't have, uh, you know, cholera, typhoid. And then the second thing is, which is more pertinent today, the vaccination programs that the scientists brought, brought in, like the vaccination for, uh, you know, from smallpox right up to the theory and all the, all those polio and right up to, to our vaccinations today. So the two things were really important, that early intervention in health was really important. And also the idea that sometimes when we've got a, a difficult problem or uh, uh, sometimes we need to widen our lens where we look for the solution for that. It's not necessarily um, where we might think it might be. Uh, and I'm you know, very keen on bringing those ideas uh, and this fit very well in with recovery education. The other thing that, that I worked uh, for a long time was in neurology. Uh, and particularly in the community with people with multiple sclerosis and other uh, acquired brain injuries. And uh, the two things that it came from in that experience was that when I was seeing people who were diagnosed in their early 20s, which was quite a shock to me, um, coming even from a nursing background, was that they, they, these people had to take responsibility for their own health care, their physical and, again, their mental health, which was, again, another interesting aspect that there was an overlap between the physical and mental health um, and that's something that became very important to the recovery idea that you do take responsibility and try to take responsibility for, for healthcare. So just to sort of briefly identify why I think the recovery um, college and the recovery um, services that we provide have been well received and what, what's successful is, I think it's a unique makeup. Uh, and the, the critical thing with that is all our staff are, are again peer educators are people who've got a lived experience of, of dealing with difficult issues uh, medical health emotional issues uh, and they are in a sense role models they are i call them sometimes a role model of hope uh, so for a lot of people that join our programs they need a sense of hope to get them through the dark times when they're um unwell distressed uh, you know and uh, our peer educators provide that they're they're Provide that sense of empathy, the understanding, and they can reach out and connect with people better because they've been through those experiences themselves and, and support them in a, in a more authentic way. I think there's a sort of honesty about our approach. Uh, we don't hide anything. We try, we, we say people, you know, uh, our peer educators, we've experienced this, so we know what you're going through. Uh, and that idea of hope is quite interesting because hope to us is like H-O-P-E, hearing other people's experiences. And that's a huge thing for us hearing other people's experiences in our group work, uh, if we can provide a safe environment in our courses that people can actually listen to each other and sometimes talk about their own uh, experiences um, through, uh, you know, in, in an honest way, then, then it's really, it can be quite uh, therapeutic. Um, the other thing that I would say about our courses is, and what we try to do is we keep them very simple. The language is very simple. There's no medical jargon. We tend to veer away from medical diagnosis uh, because we're coming from an education, out of, out of education space. Um, so we don't want to create any barriers. Um, so we talk about big emotions. Uh, and really, we try to normalize this, um, you know, and we find that that is very responsive to people. Anybody who has experienced big emotions in their life, grief, uh, loss, bereavement, uh, disappointment, failure, um, you know, trauma, small trauma, big traumas, even betrayal or things like that or loss, uh, you know, also friendships. And, you know, there's, there's lots of people that come to our courses who have been through difficult times. And uh, the language we use is about, is, is, is not a clinical, certainly. And, uh, you know, but compassion and, and understanding. And uh, I think that's that's helpful too. It doesn't people put, put barriers up with people and uh, I think it makes them feel more at home and relaxed. Uh, and also I think we take that idea of taking uh, self-responsibility for own healthcare, really important, supporting aspect of it. And in fact, I was um, facilitating a, a wellness recovery action uh, plan there recently in Enniskillen and one of the women on the course though was really profound. She said that she, you know, she had experienced a CVA a stroke. Uh, for ten years, she had to train herself back how to speech, 
uh, to talk again and and walk. And she realized at some stage that you know there was no going to be. She had a struggle to get services. She had a struggle through her rehabilitation. And what she said, her mantra was, uh, and this is what I've used again before, but it's uh, if it is up to, it, sorry, if it is to be, it's up to me. So that was her mantra. If it is to be, it's up to me. So she was really taking responsibility for her own uh, and uh, healthcare and trying to to through rehabilitation. And also we emphasize the idea of uh, you know support from other people, uh, uh, either our family or, or network or community. So the, just unlocking or, or um, making people aware of the resources within themselves and their communities, which is really important. And um, there's a couple of final things I'd like to say about the, uh, the uniqueness of the recovery approach. Um, it's co-designed, it's so it's, we call it co-production. It's co-designed and co-delivered by healthcare professionals and peer educators. So it's really unique in that regard. And, and um, you know, that's a really good collaborative approach for work, for working relationships between peer educators and, uh, and uh, you know, people working in, particularly in the mental health area. Um, and I think that 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 augurs well for the future because in a situation where we've got a huge demand for our services, particularly from you know in the mental health area, um, you know capacity building is important. And how are you going to do that? And I think there's a there might be an element where we could use this untapped resources into the future. People who have been on courses like RAP courses or whatever or experienced that might be in a position to again be part of that community. They can support others. So it could unlock a huge potential there in terms of the healthcare, uh, and it might be something that hopefully it, it becomes embedded. <clears throat> Again, we're, we're finishing up our project, uh, but we're hoping it will be embedded. I know parts of the North, Northern Ireland is certainly embedded in other parts of the South. So we're certainly hopeful in the area that we work, it will be, as I say, it's been received very well. It's been shown to be successful, the numbers, and, uh, and hopefully we'll embed this into the future and maybe change the change the, the approach to the traditional approach or add a new approach uh, to, to mental health care and inter early intervention. So listen, thank you for that. Sorry it took so long. I'll uh, pass you over to uh, Christine Devine, a colleague of mine who works in the Fermanagh area, if that's okay, thanks. That's great, Kevin. Thanks very much. Um, so Kevin has talked about so much and covered so much. Um, I'm just going to talk a little bit of what it's like to be a peer educator. And as a peer educator, Kevin's already mentioned that we have lived experience. So my lived experience came from a breast cancer diagnosis back in 2008. And although I would normally be a quite um, positive person, um, the actual um, surgeries and treatments that followed um, that diagnosis really took its toll on me, um, uh, not only physically, but mentally and emotionally as well. Um, but I think um, one of the gems um, in this whole scenario about being a peer educator is that we can share at the beginning of our courses that we have a lived experience. And then that um, helps people to feel um, a little less um, worried about what uh, the, maybe is in the course content, but also leaves it that we are more relatable and that, and I think Kevin mentioned this earlier, that it can inspire hope in others. And I think once you've got hope, that leads you on then to take the positive steps you need to take towards your own wellness. Um, so in Fermanagh, we've delivered to uh, quite a range of different groups. So from um, uh, the Belcoos Men's Shed, and we did a cooking class there and getting a good night's sleep. Um, right through to Inniskillen, we've worked with um, Fresh Focus, which is the mental health and learning difficulty group. Um, we've worked very closely with the Swell Cancer Group, um, and we've done a lot of work there with their men's group a mixed group and we've also, as Kevin mentioned, um, the RAP course, which has been very, very well received. And we're also currently running um, a RAP course with the stroke group in Inniskillen as well. Um, we've, I've also worked very closely with the Oaks Healthy Living Centre in Lisnesky and um, we were able to, to um, especially during lockdown um, via Zoom, um, co-produce a lot of courses which now have been 
put on to the Innovation Recovery, My Mental Health Recovery website. Um, so just a little bit about the courses. I, th I think um, the courses are very, they're sort of very practical and down to earth. And um, I think Kevin mentioned that. So it's n they're not really medicalized. They're coming from a very um, grounded, practical point of view. And we give a lot of tips and techniques that people can use themselves to really help them on their journey to wellness and recovery. Um, and the RAP course in particular, I have found um, absolutely fantastic, not only for myself on a personal level, but also as a facilitator. Um, it sort of has um, a few uh, values and ethics that are at its core. And one of them um, really, which I think is very important, is that we treat everybody as equal. And I think that's where the peer educators have really made a difference in um, the, the um, mental health education, um, that we can do that and that everybody on the course is treated really with dignity, um, compassion and respect. And quite often people aren't used to being treated like that. They're being, uh, they can be used to getting talked to and not talked with. So I, I think, um, really um that for me um kind of highlights um the way that that we work and maybe the the success that there has been as kevin mentioned the numbers are speaking for themselves but um just as an example because you're probably wondering you know what this rap course is that that we've mentioned but i have a couple of um evaluations that um that I actually got this week from a course that, that finished up. And um, one of them says, um, great course, well delivered, lots of ideas to take home, plenty of group discussions, we learn from each other. Great support from the group, new contacts from the group. I feel that I am not alone. Um, I'll just read another one. Um, Thank goodness I enrolled. Yes, I've done courses before, but revision and seeing it from another angle has really helped. I need reminding that I need to look after myself. Looking and discussing um, triggers um, was a great help, giving me the opportunity for planning for the worst, which is a crisis. I had never thought of this before, and it will be good for me to work through the wrap booklet and the plan. And RAP is just very simple and effective, and it works through a series of um, wellness tools and then action plans. And I think those reviews just sort of sum that up. So thank you for listening to me. I'll give you back to Kevin. Uh, I'll pass you on to Ted. So uh, thanks, Ted. Okay. You let us know what you're doing over in Sligo and Leitrim. Thanks very much indeed, uh, Kevin, and bear, just bear with me one sec. Ted is our um, man for mindfulness. Uh, I'm he's having a, problems with my a, uh, technology uh, here, yeah. so uh, that's great. I have it sorted now. Um, so, yeah, Kevin, great to be here uh, this afternoon with you all. And uh, my name is Ted Kelly, and I'm a peer educator here down in Sligo, been in my role, I say four years, I think it's three and a half, but um, sometimes I get lost on the time. And uh, what I do um, as a peer educator, uh, I've lived experience of trauma, mental health uh, issues, and all of that with anxiety and worry. And just a little bit about uh, myself, Back in the day, I found I had nowhere to go as a man, especially. Um, I didn't know what to do uh, with what happened in my childhood, what happened in my adulthood and stuff. And I was fortunate in that I had some very good friends and I uh, one in particular. Um, I, I left my job back 15, 20 years ago now 
and uh, embarked on a journey into wellness, essentially, um, building myself up from the from the ground, uh, from the ground up. And um, I decided I was going to do something that I really loved, which was poetry. Through that, um, I became part of a group, a uh, um, suicide group, those who had attempted thought about or whatever, the uh, suicide and all of that. Through that, I met a wonderful man uh, who introduced me to uh, meditation and mindfulness. And I took myself off to um, and I took myself off to uh, to a monastery, Buddhist monastery, over in France, and uh, that was my path on wellness, and it was the beginning of uh, changing uh, changing my life. And I found refuge in that place uh, that I would go to for two or three months every year, and come back to Ireland then. And um, fast forward then to uh, today, in the last the last eight or nine eight or nine years. I uh, did um, an MSc in bereavement support with the Irish Hospice Foundation and uh, worked with people who are sat rather with uh, people at the end of their lives. And um, the fact that I wanted to end mine, um, I was um, uh, back about 15, 20 years ago, uh, was uh, extraordinary. Uh, the, just being able, the privilege of sitting with someone who was coming uh, to the end of their lives and reflecting back uh, on their own lives and the joys that they had, the sorrows they had, and um, uh, just being able to sit with that, I learned so much on the value of life, the value of living. And I found a refuge uh, from not being able to find a refuge um, uh, back in the day. I found as Joseph Campbell said, to follow your bliss. And um, the, what I learned from that was the value of living a good life and doing something that you really loved. And um, then when this opportunity came up to join the Cult Innovation Recovery Project, cooperation and working together, C-A-W-T. How beautiful is that? Because we are a collaboration and uh, essentially, because our course is born out of the community. So, in other words, we go out to the community, identify um, the community identifies a particular need, a particular course that would be suitable for their people, for their particular group, and we fill that. And um, here in Sligo, I go to the Neurology Support Centre, um, the Mental Health Services uh, from. I deliver mindfulness and relaxation to a group of people uh, who suffer from varying degrees of mental illness um, from low to high. And it's just been extraordinary, the uh, transformation in these people as a result of just being able to come home to ourselves, to bring our minds back home to our bodies, because so often our, while we're sitting here, our bodies are here, but our minds are somewhere else entirely. And for me, uh, with anxiety and worry, I'm if I find something, if I can't find something to worry about, I'm worried about that. And uh, so I always have to take stock of myself and come back to myself and breathe. And every so often during the day, I'll take five or ten minutes to do that so that I don't lose the run of myself. And so often in our daily lives, we're looking for a refuge someplace out there. And what our courses do is to bring us back home to ourselves, to find that refuge in ourselves. As Chris was talking there about the about the RAP program, um, that is a framework. The Wellness Recovery Action Plan is a framework. But we fill that with our own lived experience, participants and facilitators together collaboratively work to explore what it is that keeps ourselves well. And one of the fundamental things, um, uh, common things in all of our programs is that ability to come home to ourselves. And we call it mindfulness, uh, we can equally call it self-awareness or whatever. But we find that when we connect 
when we bridge that gap between our minds and our bodies through the medium of the breath, we establish ourselves in uh, the here and now, in the present moment. And there's that wonderful sharing that comes out of that, the wisdom that comes from uh, sharing together uh, as a group what's going on for us. And we also realize um, uh, in the lovely words of that poet Paddy Kavanagh, you know, that we're not alone in our loneliness. Others have been here, known griefs we thought her special own, problems we couldn't solve, lovers we could not have, pleasures we missed by inches. And he goes on and he says, I, I stand before you here today to claim my joyful inheritance because most have died the day before the opening of that holy door. And that was one of his last lectures in UCD. But when we explore through rap or through mindfulness, what's going on or what's going on for us? You know, we are opening that holy door in ourselves because we find that Jesus, you know, when we look back on our lives and the difficulties and the obstacles that we've overcome, what tools we use to keep ourselves well, you know, no matter what sure, no matter what life throws at us, we're ready, we're prepared, we know we'll deal with it because we already have identified the wellness, the, the tools we use to keep ourselves well. We know that when the struggles or the storms of life come along, we know what to do. We can sit with ourselves, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, calm our bodies, calm our minds, release the tension from ourselves. And you can't get a refuge than that. And my experience is that in the groups, you know, I, I work with a traveler, uh, uh, I've worked with traveler groups as well. And uh, it's generating creative ways to work with people. That's what the, we're called. We're not called the Innovation Recovery Project for nothing. So in other words, uh, when it came to um, mindfulness and relaxation, I was talking to a key person there and she said, uh, no, no, don't call it mindfulness. Uh, dealing with stress and uh, dealing with stress and anxiety. So that was grand uh, for the men. And uh, we did our mindfulness and we did our relaxation, but we didn't call it mindfulness. We called it, uh, you know, just taking it easy and calming our bodies, calming our minds. And we had to practice as well because, you know, uh, there's that wonderful spirit of collaboration. We're all in it together. And sure, we are. There's no one up there talking down <laughs> to the masses. We're part of the community. And um, yeah, wonderful stuff. And oh, just to finish with that, uh, that uh, again, uh, gathering these tools of wellness and gathering these tools that we use in for us. Um, again, to use the words of Paddy Kavanagh, um, gather the bits of road that aren't gravel to the traveller but eternal lanes of joy on which no man who walks can ever die. Bring in the particular trees that caught you in their mystery and love again the weeds that grew somewhere specially for you. Collect the river and the stream that flashed upon a pensive team and a positive world make, a world, man's world, can't shake. And there is that lovely sense of that unshakeability in ourselves, when we recognize the goodness in us, the gems of wisdom that we have, the obstacles we've got over, bringing them all out into a workshop setting, because we all learn from each other, all these gems. What's good What's good for me might resonate with someone else, someone else's um, uh, tools for wellness or whatever, that might strike a chord with myself and I use that. And that's what we're about. Uh, the, uh, the Recovery College. So I'll leave it at that. And um, thanks indeed. It's great to be here. Thanks, Ted. Thanks a lot for that. And uh, just to sort of say, you know, um, Ted's, Ted's courses on mindfulness and relaxation are really popular. One of the, you know, so, and it's really to to experience one of those is to certainly to live in a relaxed state. It's great. Uh, wouldn't recommend on a Friday afternoon you fall asleep, but it's uh, sometimes. Um, I need that too. But uh, just to sort of say a couple of things, one of the highlights for me was also working with Chris on some of the 
<clears throat> as an early intervention thing going into schools, we did about maybe 30, 40 schools on the border areas. And these were schools where there had been even sometimes suicide and, you know, that whole area of suicide prevention. <clears throat> and even just talking to the 16 year olds about normalizing the language around, uh, you know, health challenges and emotions rather than. And it certainly helps. And I think what we discovered there is people need this information. Parents, we did uh, courses for parents having difficult conversations about, you know, uh, suicide and suicide prevention and also how you deal with difficult situations in childhood, uh, particularly teenage years. And what we discovered is that there's a huge amount of a dearth of information out there. People need it. They needed to be uh, talked about it in a sensitive way, but also in, 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 a, in a relevant way, uh, you know, not glossed over. Uh, uh, and certainly hitting those emotional depths that sometimes people are in, in desperate situations. So that early intervention stuff is something we need, to, we hope to pursue, particularly schools and young people. Uh, prevention is better than cure. We've also done stuff, as I say, with, with uh, uh, people in, in hospitals and in, in admission units and, and, and coming out of mission units so, uh, in hospitals too. So, but in that regard, we, you know, the, one of the great things that came out of this is also our online courses. And we spent a lot of time working together in a collaborative approach with healthcare professionals and ourselves to design these uh, 24 courses online that are open to everybody. One of the big things from my experience in mental health, working in large institutions for, for, for large parts of it, you know, when I was 20, in my 20s and that, was you know, and, and for people to access uh, information, access mental health services. So... Uh, it's got better and it's getting better, but uh, online now are courses that people can log on to uh, anonymously, can find, like, for example, Introduction to Trauma and Healing. Uh, courses that are really good for young people, they're interactive and exciting and interesting. Uh, and things like think of other courses for, like, for depression or other. We've got a couple of also innovative courses that are available there for like, uh, women's groups, uh, menopause. Uh, and for men. So there is a variety of courses now available. And even if it's a case of people logging on to, to find out a bit more uh, the, the language around this, because sometimes we don't have, or particularly young people, don't have the language about what's happening to them. Uh, if there's a challenge, if they're facing some of the life's challenges, either developmentally, if they've had a bereavement or bullying or sexuality or anything at all they don't you know it can be a difficult time so they need to have a, an understanding and a language and even if they get uh, some of that language and understanding on these courses and then go on to to get support from their their other uh, supporters in the community uh, and workshops we it's a nice combined approach between our online uh, services which developed over COVID uh, you know mothers necessity you know uh, inventions we invented this through through necessity more than anything else. So, um, and it, it's it's been in in a paradoxical way we've reached more people by Zoom during the COVID because we're able to uh, to to you know reach a wider audience. So that's been successful in that regard. So, really, um, that was a, an overview. I hope uh, people got some out of it. I do think it's um, I think the recovery, you know. Uh, projects, the recovery colleges, they're called, they're, I suppose they're called colleges because it's adult education and it's in, the, in that education space. We're not therapy, we're not um, competing with other like medical interventions. We're trying to simplify the language, we're trying to normalize the language around big emotions and the challenges that we all face as humans. Uh, and we're also trying to build that community where people are supportive and understanding. And the more we can do that, uh, I think the better. Uh, and I think it augurs well if we can harness the untapped potential there uh, with peers. The peer, education, peer educators are the backbone of, of the recovery college. And if they're um, established and embedded more in lots of different areas, uh, as Ted was said, we were at a traveler conference in Sligo yesterday, and the level of honesty there was brilliant. Uh, there's a community. Um, minority community trying to come to terms with a lot of issues in their own community and they've got peer educators um, you know working and it was really uh, humbling and insightful and, uh, and really inspiring too so I, I when people are talking about the huge challenge facing mental health uh, I, I agree but there's light at the end of the tunnel there's a silver lining and the silver lining for me is that we've got this 
a uh, huge community potential on tap that we could can use more and uh, I would certainly encourage anybody to get involved come on our courses and uh, try them out and uh, hopefully they'll become more embedded and recovery college will be a, a, a mainstream mainstream if there's any questions anybody has i'm quite happy to or we're quite happy to take them i see some comments from rob uh, robert i appreciate your presentation very helpful sorry I mean, right, okay thank you and uh, I'll just see if there's any others. I know it's lunchtime, guys. So you know, we're eating into your lunch. Uh, well done, everybody. Okay, that's great. So, Linda, I don't know if there's anything else. You maybe you've got any lingering questions for us. I have one indeed. We're fast approaching World Mental Health Day on Monday, so this was a very aptly yeah. timed session, I believe. Um, can I check what kind of difference in outreach did you have during COVID compared to normally, you know, your normal uptake? You know, did you see a huge increase in demand? Are you only seeing that peak coming now? Or are the, have the numbers all, always been pretty steady? It takes it takes um, phases, to be honest with you. There's a certain sense of uh, fatigue, uh, Zoom fatigue that we all experience around, uh, you know, or in May, April, May or June when the weather gets better. We we try to tailor our programs, give people a break over the Zoom over the summer. Uh, but during the winter months, people, it can be a lonely time with the, the, the dark weather. And so they will. Uh, and, and the great thing about Zoom is that you can log on anonymously. You don't even have to put on your camera. You can just listen and you can be part of that conversation uh, and people do find that uh, liberating and, 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 and sort of especially when you talk about areas like mental health it can be still by quite steady able to go on to something like that uh, anonymously and, and just listen is fantastic yeah in terms of the numbers they, they come up and down we're not too sure i think we're we're seeing the residual effects of covid guys uh, and we will see it for the next year or two. So it, it's going to, there's a lot of, one of the things we, myself and Chris were doing there, uh, and Ted will, we're doing more and more courses with uh, staff, healthcare staff, um, people with working in intensive care areas that are sort of burned out and really as Ted said sometimes it's we don't do anything magical here we're not giving anybody huge rocket science information but we do allow them sometimes to take a pause and to uh, that space to uh, understand what's happened um, and, and and simple question is sometimes sometimes as simple as asking them how, how are they doing themselves how you know nobody's ever asked them that and, uh, and that's sometimes all the need uh, a bit of respite so we're doing a lot more um course now and we hope to do it with staff to keep them um healthy and well and uh, so yeah to answer you i think it's been a mixed blessing um linda the zoom is, uh, it's very hard to, to replicate the sort of human touch and the uh, so we're trying going to try that combined approach but um zoom's here to stay and you know we've reached people from all parts of ireland on, on the courses which we've never been able to do and uh, particularly schools even schools uh, they've been able to log on and, and they, they found it useful too so in colleges so yeah don't know anybody okay. else found Don, can I ask you just to show the, the video that we had promised at the beginning so that we can share that with people who yeah. haven't been able to join us today? Absolutely. And then we'll come back to Ted. Cooperation and working together, also known as COT, are a cross-border health and social care partnership. COT secured funding from the European Union's Interreg 5A programme to implement the Innovation Recovery Project. Following a formal open procurement process in 2021, the COT team appointed Orion Learning to design and develop the Virtual Recovery College. The Innovation Recovery Project has established a mental health recovery college covering three cross-border areas in the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland. The purpose of the Virtual Recovery College is to support people's recovery from mental health difficulties through learning and education that is co-produced by people with lived experience and people with professional experience. 
working collaboratively with COT, Orient Learning designed and developed the Virtual Recovery College. The Virtual Recovery College is a combined learning management system and custom content solution that provides online training on mental health and wellbeing topics to a broad target audience, comprising the public, people who have direct experience of mental health difficulties, including carers and family members, whilst also supporting GPs and other health and social care professionals. As well as supporting the configuration and deployment of the Totara LMS, which facilitates the hosting and tracking of the learning content, Orion Learning is also responsible for the ongoing development of a suite of 24 interactive e-learning modules on topics such as anxiety, depression and grief. The e-learning content developed for the Court Recovery College includes the use of realistic videos, digital stories and animations. Thank you, Dawn. I just wanted to say personally, um, thank you so much for coming today and sharing the work that you've done. Um, I, for one, was not aware of the, the breadth of what you were doing. Um, so I've had some valuable insights myself today. Um, and by, by chance rather than design, our session next month is actually about user-centered design of our digital products. So it's a nice lead into the work that you're obviously doing, given that you have peer educators and community involvement. And that's something that we are striving to do in all our digital projects. So um, it's great to hear the success stories that you've um, been able to refer to today. And thank you for being so candid about your own journeys and experiences and your the reasons why you became involved in the programme as well. We will be um, posting this online um, and if we have any queries, um, we may well come back probably through you, Kevin, as the project coordinator, yeah. um, just to come through with any um, other queries. If anybody else has any other questions or comments that they want to make. Okay. Thank you so much for your time on a Friday afternoon. It was really, really appreciated. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Linda. Thank you.